Hi everyone, I'm Dio from Vital Biker. Now, in today's episode, I want to share with you more about my Java Zero. Uh, I've been using this bike for commuting to work for quite some time already. And as I ride, I've been thinking what are the different upgrades that I can do to the Java Zero to make it more fun and to get more performance out of it. Now, ultimately, I have come up with three different price tiers of upgrades. And today, I want to show you tier one upgrade, which is within a hundred Singapore dollars of budget. And with that budget, I think to get the most performance gain, I've decided I should work on the group set. Currently, it is using a 1x7 group set, and I found a 1x10 group set to upgrade onto this Java Zero. And it's none other than the Sensa RX10. So with $100, I've managed to get all these parts. That is a RX Sensa RX10 shifter. That's a 10-speed shifter for the rear derailleur. The Sensa RX rear derailleur. And I've got a nice blue color because black and red are out of stock. Oh. But anyway, it works. And here I also got the SUMC 10-speed chain as well as a 10-speed freewheel. Do note that for Java Zero, the existing stock wheel uses a freewheel system, so I have to get a freewheel as well, not the cassette type. Okay, as I do the changing of the parts, let me also share with you the good things about this upgrade. The existing 7-speed freewheel that comes with the bike has a 1428T combination, while the 10-speed freewheel that I'm putting in now has a 1136T combination. For those of you who find it confusing about all the T's that we're talking about, for a cassette or freewheel in our case, more T simply means lighter to pedal, easier to climb, while fewer T means heavier to pedal and faster on flat roads. Therefore, with this upgrade, I'm making my bike easier to climb on slopes and faster on flat roads. Beautiful. Not only that, 10 speed also means that I have more different gears to choose from. This will be very helpful when I'm riding a long distance as it will be easier for me to find that sweet spot gear and maintain a higher average speed. There are a few things that I want to highlight to you here. Number one is cassette versus freewheel. Before doing this upgrade, you must find out which system your bike is using and buy the correct setup. Point number two is the derailleur cage length. You might have noticed that some derailleurs comes in different cage length and each cage length is designed to support different size cassettes. So first decide the cassette size, then buy a derailleur with a cage length that supports that cassette size. Usually for foldies, it is better to go with short or mid cage length with a cassette no bigger than 32T. However, in my case, I find that with some adjustments, I am still able to get this long cage to work without getting too close to the ground. Lastly, when unsure, always get shifters and derailers of the same brand and same series. This will eliminate compatibility issue. Shifters and derailers of different brands are usually not compatible. Now I understand that Shimano and SRAM are the popular choices when it comes to group set because they are really reliable and are of really high quality. But this sensor RX10 seems to be working very well too. The shifting is crisp and the indexing is accurate. Alright, now that it works well on the bike stand, I'm going to bring it out for a test ride just to make sure that it can still work well under actual load. Now you can see here, this was before the upgrade. I was able to ride up this rather steep slope, but it wasn't easy. But after the upgrade, it became significantly lighter and it was much easier to complete the same slope as before. 
So I'm definitely happy with this new upgrade. All right, so I'm done with the upgrade and I've tested it. It turned out that it is just as great as I've accept, expected it to be. Um, in my opinion, 10 speed is about just right for my kind of ride. It's more than sufficient, to be honest, uh, a leisure ride on a foldable bike. This combination now is definitely able to handle all those climbs that I will experience in a city like I'm living in, like Singapore. And at the same time, I can ride pretty fast given this 1136 combination of cassette ratio. Actually, you may not even need 36 uh, teeth to at the lightest gear. Probably you can even go 32 or 34. Yeah, but well, to me, there's no harm to have it more. So, well, I really like this uh, setup right now. I think I can even go for some mid-range or long-range ride and still have quite a bit of fun with this bike. Uh, I mean, recently, I'm not sure if you guys have watched it. Our friends from GCN has actually done um, a climbing on a Brompton bike to climb some mountains. Or maybe I will just find some time to use this Java Zero and climb Handon, my favorite training climb, and see how it goes. Now, I'm sure you also have some ideas of uh, what kind of upgrade you have in mind with a $100 budget for your 4D, do let us know in the comment box below so that uh, we can have more ideas as, as well as our viewers can have more ideas of what to do. And don't forget, I still have tier 2 and tier 3 upgrades on this Java Zero in time to come. So stay tuned and I hope you like today's content. Do remember to like and subscribe and if you have friends who are using the Java Zero, you can share with them this content as well. Thank you very much and I hope to see you again.